All right, I think we're live. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Rachel Delahanty. I am a senior staff attorney in the Fairbanks Alaska Legal Services Corporation office. Um, and I am here today to give a presentation on the basics of debt. Um, I hope you can see my uh, slides. I have them up. Uh, the first slide is just kind of a disclaimer notice. Uh, this presentation is only intended to cover consumer debts. It's not intended to cover commercial debts or debts owed to the government or to government agencies. Also, um, I can answer questions, but I cannot give specific legal advice on a specific case, but I can answer general legal information questions about debt. So I hope that you ask questions and I hope you learn something. Um, as I said before, um, I am attorney with Alaska Legal Services Corporation. Um, we have offices statewide throughout the state. Um, at the bottom of my slide here lists all of our um, office locations, and I work in the Fairbanks office. Al Alaska Legal Services is a private nonprofit uh, law firm that provides free legal assistance in civil legal matters to low-income Alaskans. So. We do not um, take any criminal cases. We only do civil cases. Um, we have offices statewide. And if you would like to apply for our services, we have a toll-free intake line that you can call and apply over the phone. And the number is on your screen. And don't worry, that number will be shown again later. Okay, so debtor rights and protections. Uh, the two big protections for anybody who is uh, facing a debt case is um, the unfair and deceptive debt collection practices that are prohibited by the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act or FDCPA. And then the Alaska law, which is part of that the federal the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act is a federal law. And then Alaska has its own which is called the Alaska Unfair Trade Practices and Consumer Protection Act, or the UTPCPA. Um, the FDCPA, or the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, only applies to third-party debt collectors, usually, and I'll talk more about that later. Individuals can enforce both of these acts, both the both FDCPA and the UTPCPA, and there are offices in Alaska, like the Alaska Attorney General's Office, the Federal Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, and the Federal Trade Commission that do take consumer complaints, meaning individual complaints from a consumer, which would be you, about any unfair or deceptive debt uh, collection practices. Uh, the, under the FAIR uh, FDCPA, uh, every, a debtor has rights. Um, so a debt collector who calls you on the phone, they have to send a written notice within five days. And that notice needs to tell you how much the debt, how much debt is owed, uh, the name of the creditor that you owe the debt to, and um, what to do if you do not think that you own this debt or um, that the debt might be owned by some, owed by somebody else. Um, you can also tell a debt collector in writing to stop contacting you. It doesn't mean the debt goes away, but it means that the phone calls should stop. Um, also, within 30 days of getting any kind of debt collection notice, you can send a written request to the debt collector, either disputing the debt or asking for a written validation or, as we call it, a verification letter of the debt. Um, Alaska Legal Services runs its own uh, legal information website, which is at the bottom of the screen, and it's called alaskalawhelp.org. On that website, there are sample debt dispute and verification letters and um, a sample debt collector like stop contact letter. So you can find all of those online on our website. So when I said um, that uh, the FDCPA applies usually to third-party um, debt, debt, third-party debts. Um, I want to talk about original creditors versus a debt buyer, which is which would be a third-party uh, debt person. So, an original creditor is the person or company who owned your debt first. Uh, the example I have is if you have an Alaska Airlines credit card, and then then your creditor 
or the company that you have to make monthly payments to is usually Bank of America. That is your original creditor. Uh, further, if you have like an Amazon credit card, then Synchrony Bank or Chase Bank is, you, is your original uh, creditor. A, a debt buyer or third party company is someone who has bought your debt from the original creditor or another debt buyer and is now trying to collect. And that is who, who the FDCPA typically applies to. Um, we have quite a few, there are quite a few debt buyer companies out there. The most common ones that I have seen are Portfolio Recovery Associates, um, Cavalry, and Midland Funding. Um, so if, if you get a letter from anybody who is a third party, like someone who you didn't originally get the debt from, um, you may be able to contest that under the FDCPA. What debt collectors cannot do, they cannot harass or threaten you. They cannot misrepresent the amount of the debt um, or the legal status of the debt that you owe. They cannot lie about who they are. They cannot make false claims that legal action will be taken or that you will be arrested. They cannot take or threaten to take your property like garnish your wages or sweep your bank accounts unless they can legally do so and a court order is usually required to put a lien on your property or uh, do a bank account sweep or garnish anything. So what should you do if you are sued in court over a debt? Um, so there are actually two places that a, a debt case may be filed. Um, small claims court is the more common and it is because the procedures in, a small, in the small claims court are more relaxed. The rules of evidence don't usually apply in the small claims court. It's, it's basically set up so that someone who is not represented by an attorney will have an easier time in representing themselves. Uh, the other place that it could be filed is, the, is in district court. Um, both of those are state courts. So it would be at, you know, in Fairbanks, it would be at the, at the courthouse right here in Fairbanks. That's, that's the state courthouse. Um, the, the debt, uh, the, the creditor or debt buyer will, will start the case off by filing a debt complaint. Uh, that complaint usually has, um, you know, that they've, that they've contacted you, that this is the debt that you owe. This, if, it, if it's a third party um, debt buyer that is filing this complaint, they will, they will typically state like who the original creditor was and when, and that they bought the debt from them. And now they're trying to collect um, in the place of the original creditor. So once you get that complaint and it's served upon you, you typically in the mail, um, it could also be served by a process server. Then the Alaska court system has answer forms for debt cases and forms for various civil cases that you can fill in yourself. Um, the last couple of years, the Alaska court system worked with legal services to revamp their answer form, and I worked on that project. So the answer form that the court system now has is very robust. It's like 11 pages, but a, pretty much all of your defenses or counterclaims counterclaims, or um, you can even offer to settle the case and enter a payment plan on those on those answer forms. So uh, it is it is a pretty good form. It's just kind of long and daunting. So but if you read it, it's pretty self explanatory. Um, so in order to respond to a complaint, you have to file an answer with the court and you have to serve a copy of that answer on the on the debtor on whoever um, on the on the creditor whoever is um, suing you for the debt. Uh, if you do not file an answer in the case, the other party can get what's called a default judgment, which basically means that the court will rule against you even if you do not participate in the case. Uh, in order to get a default judgment, all the creditor has to do is prove that he, that he or she served you with the debt complaint. Um, that is usually done by getting a certified green mail slip like signed by you um, or, or through a process server. And there are, kind of, there are a few other ways as well that they can do it. But if they can prove that you've been served with this debt complaint then and you do not respond by filing an answer, then they can ask the court to rule in their favor because you haven't participated in the case. And that is called a default judgment. Uh, a court-ordered judgment can include the amount of the debt to be paid by you 
um, also any costs or attorney's fees that were associated with filing the debt case, and also interest. Once a court issues a judgment, it is very difficult to get it set aside. Um, and you really wanna avoid that at all costs. So dealing with a judgment, um, if you do not pay a court judgment, uh, the, creditor, the creditor, sorry, the creditor can ask the court for a writ of execution. This writ allows them to seize your property, to pay the debt. Um, it, can, it can include wage garnishment, uh, bank account sweeps, uh, they can garnish your PFD, they can put a lien on your house. Um, so it, it really is um, something that should be avoided. Uh, some income and assets are protected from collection um, and basically are not able to be garnished through a judgment. Um, the Alaska court system has a judgment debtor hand booklet that is extremely knowledgeable and <clears throat> You can find it on the Alaska court system website, and it basically explains what um, forms of income are exempt from debt collection and what are not. Um, examples of uh, income that is exempt would be Social Security benefits are typically exempt, along with veterans benefits, uh, the state of Alaska benefits like adult public assistance or senior benefits may be either partly or entirely exempt. Um, one of the main things that I see in my practice is uh, clients that come to me and ask, why is their PFD being garnished, but only partly? Uh, that's because in Alaska, you can garnish up to 80% of someone's PFD every single year if you have a judgment for a debt that you are collecting against them. Um, if funds are inappropriately seized, meaning... Um, you know, somebody else's money gets put into your account. Again, the, the case that I typically see is if a parent gets a judgment against them, but they have children and their children's PFDs go into the parent's uh, personal bank account along with the parent's PFD. When, the, when someone does a bank sweep, uh, the children's PFDs are taken along with the parents. If that happens, you need to act really fast. You have 15 days from when the, when the funds were seized to file a claim of exemption with the court. <clears throat> uh, other debt issues, um, debts may be time barred, meaning that they are too old to enforce or that the statute of limitations of the debt have passed. Even if you're sued for an old debt, or want a debt that you know the, the um, statute of limitations has ended on, you should still file an answer. And in the Alaska court system uh, answer form, there is a section on there that where you can explain this debt is too old, they cannot, they cannot collect on it. Legitimate debts can be settled with the debt collector. Um, if there is a court case, you can ask for mediation or a settlement conference that should be available in most state courts. Um, you should also ask about hardship considerations. Um, if you have a severe disability, if you are elderly on a fixed income, some debt collectors do reduce your debt and or could waive your debt entirely um, if they, you know, if you explain to them your circumstances, but it is not a guarantee. Um, if you have um, more than $10,000 worth of debt that could possibly um, be discharged under bankruptcy, um, I highly recommend you consult with attorney who specializes in this area as bankruptcy is a very complicated and specialized area. Uh, we do give consults on bankruptcy um, through our pro, bon our pro bono program at Legal Services. Um, so you, you can also apply and see if we can assist you in at least getting some advice on bankruptcy. Okay, I wanna talk a little bit about identity theft and credit reports. Um, so identity theft is when your personal or financial information is used for some, by someone else to make purchases or get benefits, file taxes or commit fraud. Um, signs of ID theft are unfamiliar, unauthorized activity on your credit cards or credit report, missing bills, unfamiliar bills that come to your house, uh, a bank statement that doesn't look right or checks that bounce. Um, any kind of medical bill that has a weird explanation of benefits that you didn't get. 
Under Alaska law, any consumer or legal guardian or conservator for a minor or a protected person, um, basically a parent would be a legal guardian of their child. So that means the parent can make legal decisions regarding that child's financial well-being. Um, a conservator would be so, a protected person is usually an elderly person that has lost the capability of managing their own money. And the court can appoint someone called a conservator to help to basically manage that person's money for them. And a conservator, if they, are, if they have a court order appointing them, can also take advantage of uh, can request uh, to security a security freeze on a credit report. Um, credit reports are very valuable information. You can get a free credit report every year from most of, from the major um, credit reporting agencies, which are Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Um, you can get one free every year, and I highly recommend clients to do that so that you can check and make sure that all the debts that you have are still the debts that you own personally, and there aren't any random new debts that are being added that could potentially be fraud. Um, anyways, you can ask uh, all three of these companies to put a security freeze on your credit report, which means that the credit report cannot be accessed without the permission of the consumer, guardian, or conservator. Uh, that is, that's a very handy thing to have in Alaska to keep your um, financial information more secure. All right, more information. Um, again, the Alaska Attorney General's office has a consumer protection unit. They do take uh, consumer complaints and their website is www.law.alaska.gov. Uh, the Alaska court system has tons of information on debt collection, on representing yourself and debt collection in district court or small claims court. And their website is on your screen. Alaska Legal Services, as I said before, runs its own um, information uh, website, and that is alaskalawhelp.org. And that is also where you will find your sample verification letter, uh, your sample, um, you know, debtor, please stop calling me letter, and other really valuable information. Um, you can also, the Federal Trade Commission, they take consumer um, complaints as well, and they have, that's their website. And lastly, the Federal Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, or CFPB, as I call it, they also take consumer complaints about unfair trade, unfair debt practices, and deceptive debt practices. So um, that was kind of a quick presentation. Um, I hope you uh, learn something. And if you have any questions, now is the time to ask. Um, as I said before, you can apply by phone to legal services if you want to have, if you want to see if we can assist you with a specific debt case you're dealing with. And the number to apply is 888-478-2572. So it doesn't look like we've had any questions, but um, if anyone views this presentation after the live, you can Put any questions you have in the chat and we can get back to you um, and I also encourage everyone like Rachel said to call our number and or visit our alaskalawhelp.org website. All right thank you Danielle and uh, thank you everyone who um, watched uh, this this presentation is recorded so it'll be posted onto our ALSC Facebook page and you can watch it um, at your convenience at a later time. All right thank you. Have a good day.